Whoa, Daniel. I come here to. Don't try to brainwash me right now. Be here. Oh, God, yeah, baby. You know when you are a hot one. We are lying, we are laughing, we are chatting, we are chilling, we are hot one. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Daniel Loveless, and welcome to Hot Ones Caribbean. It's that show with hot questions and even hotter wings. Now, today, we have the world renowned chef, Jason Peru. Now, this man is not only one of the top chefs in the Caribbean, but he's one of the top chefs in the world. He has cooked for stars such as P. Diddy, Al Pacino, and even Jennifer Lopez. Well, welcome to the show, Chef Jason Peru. How are you doing today? I'm good, you know, Daniel. Uh, <laughs> seeing our feet in front of me here, boy. I mean, I'm ready for it, you know. You can see how I dress today. I'm in full battle mode. All right, all right. I'm ready for you, you know. I mean, this year coming on hot ones today. Come in and hang it up with Daniel. I have to be ready. And I've seen the wings in front of me, so you know what that means. Pace in the waist. Pace in the waist. So like that. This. International chef. So it is alleged that you and Pepper Sauce grew up pitching marbles. Alleged? <laughs> Did you hear that from, boy? Listen to me. I will play this way. Mm -hmm. Me and Pepper Sauce, yeah. my threshold for Pepper Sauce is the way how I just view people in life. All right. You just have to get learn them, adapt to them, and deal with them. <laughs> Not all the time you might be successful, eh? but I'm willing to try it today, Daniel. Let me try it. Let me do man. this. So, how is your pepper tolerance? Let's just stop there. I will give it a 50%. Here. All right. I'm not the biggest pepper lover, but as a chef, as a culinarian, you have to obviously keep the palate well-tuned to spice. And I've eaten pepper sauce all throughout the course of the world. You talk mm. about Mexico, the Americas, mm -hmm. throughout the continents, mm -hmm. even Asian food. You know, they're known for spice. Yes. So I want to see what you all have in front of me today. Well, let me start with you. presenting me with today. a little sweet because you know Trinidad and Tobago we like things sweet especially across the Caribbean we like things sweet so we're gonna start it off with the peri peri tamarind and bird pepper sauce wait now you say it's bird pepper you say that on it pepper I hear you like bird pepper I, I grew up eating bird pepper we're gonna say bud pepper bud pepper bud pepper in Trinidad and Tobago it's that tamarind in it with a little bit of sweetness and tartness in it I hope by the time you reach the 10 sauce you could be talking like that Daniel, watch it, watch it. See, let me pour a little bit inside the milk up here. Let me try out the thing now, man. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me go inside there. Dip that so. Look at that. Already. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Daniel, I'm going again. You go, you go. You enjoy it, man. Mm-hmm. You know, pepper sauce is trying to be hot, as you know. Mm-hmm. It have different flavor profiles inside of it. Right. Any sweet, mm -hmm. any tart. You get a little bit of paste inside there. But at the same time, it's homegrown to some degree because I am familiar with right. tamarind. And that's something that I love a lot. So I would say, yeah, full points for that one, you know. It's tasty. As Chinese would say, tasty. Chef, tell me, what is your go to dish that is pepper based? I would say pepper shrimp, you know. Pepper shrimp. I love pepper shrimp. You see, Shrimp on the whole is very exotic. I think people like it when they hear, ooh, fancy shrimp, you know, lobs and all these different things. But when I cook in pepper shrimp, I do use the raw peppers inside there. Mm. And sort that up in the oil. What kind of pepper? Either habanero or mm. scotch bonnet. You know, scotch bonnet is our like traditional pepper here in Trinidad and Tobago. The Americans will know and the rest of the world about habanero, which is easily substituted. But when I'm feeling a little wicked, a little bit of ghost pepper, Maruga scorpion pepper in the tail. Right. In that and when you see a cooking the shrimp, Daniel, they have to ensure that the shells are on the shrimp. So Love that way that. the pepper gets to seep inside of the shells. It kusume inside. Kusume. You know what kusume is? I don't even know. Educate me. Kusume is when you see the flavors <laughs> come together and they unite and they right. love up right and they just seep into each other they and impregnate that... <laughs> we, we we'll get there we'll get there no, don't worry we're going there we're going there impregnate we're getting to that soon but tell me you went to the to the expert level with me right but i want to take it down a little bit and i want to ask you what led you to choosing this career path i was to about becoming a culinary expert i was about nine years old you know and i was a fat boy daniel mm -hmm. i used to eat everything in sight i love my sweets i love my savories my confectionaries i wish i don't eat a whole pack of mm -hmm. almond joy the little chocolates mm. i started to put on the weight 
and then obviously I went to secondary school and uh, I had love for food even more but they make fun of me I got bullied every single day Shucks. secondary school rough eh, people I could tell you all that but that led me to go to the gym I met a gym instructor and he taught me about keeping myself healthy exercising he said Jason use the medium of eating as being a channel of good health mm -hmm. and I started to eat properly and then I, I was so motivated by that I went to culinary school I did well I got so many scholarships because it was something that came natural to me mm -hmm. and that is how I am today you know, I do what I love and it's not a job to me and that is why I try to spark interest in everything that I do in terms of my shows and productions on television get people excited about food wonderful yeah man and how was your experience studying abroad from you know getting a degree from you know trinidad and tobago and then having to go abroad and study now i would tell you it was a culture shock eh, because it was the first time i went abroad mm -hmm. and obviously i'm living across there i went to johnson wales university i got a scholarship to Good go there you. To, yeah i got a scholarship to go and do my bachelor's in sciences degree across there in culinary management and the thing about it is that across there um i met up ingredients that i was not familiar with wow and that's it the thing about culture is that we may know about body here and all these different ingredients but in miami they did not know about body you know i must have to get doubles across there listen you can't get good doubles across oh, there and they have people doing it but there's nothing like sweet home tea and tea doubles right you know so i miss my food but obviously i had always had my little hot sauce and stuff with inside of my pocket with me i move with it he introduced the locals to it yes but it was a brilliant thing and i wouldn't trade it out for the world being educated away and having that experience of traveling meeting so many different cultures and people a plus in my book yeah man this edition of hot ones caribbean is brought to you by be mobile This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, Trinidad and Tobago. So we want to take it to the second level. We want to go to gear two now and move on to the, the basso di pepper sauce. So quick, we're going to level yeah, two. Yeah, let's go to level two now, man. It's basso di. It's basso di, you go. Yeah, totally tasty. Check this out now. I love the color on this Daniel. Beautiful. Dip. It's like almost the color of mango. <laughs> like mango puree. Ready to go? I'm ready. You win already? I want to take a second dip in now, Daniel. Take a second. You you dip in too? Or what waiters? Because it seems like I do the put two double dip in here, you know. I go dip again. I go dip again. Dip now, man. Let me do this. You must fold the two bones like that and then pull it off like this. Watch. In your oh, opinion, if I nice make wing taste better or something so. Listen, I'll tell you something about wings, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Wings are the most tender part of the chicken, but it has the most fat because obviously chickens don't tend to fly, so they have right. a lot of fat deposits inside here. Okay. So obviously it's very unctuous in the mouth and easily digestible when you chew it up, and that's why it's a perfect medium for pepper sauce or hot wings or whatever you want to call it. The palate, a little tingle, huh? A little tingle. But at the end of the day, you see what I dress up in, huh? Which is the healthiest part of the of the chicken to eat, though? Breast. Why? contains little to no fat at all mm. breast meat obviously lies in this part of the chicken right and because the wings are attached to the breast chickens don't fly as mentioned so the breast does not get much work at all okay at the same time it's lean meat so at the same time when you do cook it seared grill barbecued or whatever the case may be you get a nice texture coming through listen i am a chef from a point of view where people outside there you're listening to me you all know you all don't like dry breasts right cook your breast properly <laughs> So, mm -hmm. you travel to so many destinations around the world, cooking for so many famous people. Who was the most famous person that you cooked for? I would have to say one day, um, J Lo came into the into the oh restaurant. My. You know, Miss J to the L O Jenny from the block. Yes, and you know she's a little hot mama herself. Mm -hmm. She knows about good pepper. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, she came in, and obviously, let me tell you something about cooking in restaurants. It's not like you could just fly out and say, "Jello, I love you." It don't work like that. Right. That's the level of professionalism. They will mention, "Hey, Jello is in our dining room and so forth like that." But to have her in the in the in the restaurant space. was great, and to see her in the space, obviously, it's a great credibility for the restaurant, nevertheless. And I must say, I worked with brilliant chefs outside there in Miami. Uh, that's Karu and Y, my head chef Alberto Cabrera. Mm -hmm. He is my mentor in the game, and he taught me a lot and a lot of his attitude and flair and personality. I actually 
got from, you know. So salutes to Mr. or Chef Cabrera rather as you would well, yeah, me say Mr. <laughs> you must call that chef eh, by the proper name, Chef Cabrera. Mm-hmm. You know, so I enjoy that. You know, many others, you know, we cooked for um throughout my time there. Al Pacino has mentioned Pete Diddy, all of these individuals and uh I must say it was a, a great thing to say that how oh, you've been around greatness like that. People who we've watched on shows and movies and with artists. Yes. It, is, it, it, it inspires you to say, well, you know, they're a human being and look what they've done with their life. And it causes you to elevate and motivate you to do whatever you do in your career yes. to the next level. A lot of people look at, look at you know, celebrities, you know, as these mythical creatures, you know, and don't realize that, you know, they're, they're normal people like just they're you and I. People, you know, Daniel. You know, yeah. tell me about some of the meals that you would have made for, for some of these celebrities. Namely J Lo or P Diddy. The thing about it is that when they come to a restaurant, they come for their, a specific type of cuisine which with that rest, a restaurant represents. Okay. So we did a lot of Caribbean based, fused with uh, Latin American based dishes. And when you see people like myself come into restaurants, especially in Miami, we bring a lot of our West Indian flair inside there. Right. So we educate them about it. And uh, they would love things a lot like things like uh, chowders, a lot of razor clams. A lot of preparations where you use a lot of heated items like uh, chili peppers, um, the jalapenos, all these different va- varied um, capsaicin uh, products, I should say. And the beauty about it is that you know your boy have to showcase and show up at some time. Come now, man. They did not know what stew chicken was, Daniel. You serious? So the concept for them to see brown sugar going into a pot, mm-hmm. and it's like, but this man, this man making dessert? <laughs> he mad. Somewhere wrong with him. How is it possible that man putting brown sugar in a pot? Yes. And he gonna make chicken. But they don't understand that it turns into a caramel and it goes from the, you know, the blackjack to the crude stage. And then you add your chicken. So it's a balance of sweet and savoriness going on inside wow. there to add to the color. And this blows their mind. I went to Africa once, Daniel. Mm-hmm. And they saw me doing that and they're like, come and see this guy. This guy's crazy. What's wrong with him, you know? The American chef is saying that and they're like, oh my God, my brother is making chicken. You know, it's funny, you know? But Traveling is beautiful, Daniel. When you could go out there and see different cultures and experience what I have been through in my life, I yes. mean, obviously, you have to say, great job, you know. I love my career a lot. <laughs> best, best, best destination that you've been cooking so far. Best destination? Mm-hmm. I would have to say, you know, um, I enjoy cooking here in Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, people will think that is cliche, but I'll tell you why. Okay. I came back we want to know this, why. I came back from the States, almost like a prodigy. All the greatest concepts in gastronomy and they're doing molecular this and all these different things and fancy plating and a dusting of this and so forth. It never really took on to Trinidadians too much because at the end of the day, Trinidadians are no nonsense. They want the food tasting good. They don't want to hear that a piece of parsley was turned into a spirit. <laughs> they would see parsley on the plate, they want it that it impregnate that chicken and it tastes good. Yes. Right? So no pretentious food nevertheless. And I always say our food is full of vitality, vibrancy. It's colorful. And that's what brings the tourists here to Trinidad and Tobago to try all the different flavors. The eclectic cuisines and the races that bring our food together. The Portuguese, the Syrian, the Indian, the Af- you name it. That's why our food is the best in the world and throughout the Caribbean. And that is why they call the man a culinary expert. This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by the National Lottery's Control Board. Now let's create benefits. This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by Be Mobile. So we're gonna keep it moving again and we're gonna move to the Alvin's Hot Sauce now. Alvin's Hot Sauce, this is an award-winning hot sauce, you know. Right. Hayden from the US Virgin Islands from St. Croix. So telling you. Down the islands then. I'm telling you. Let's go down and have you know. I'm going in with the Alvin's now. Mm-hmm. You've won already, what? I ready, I'm waiting, waiting, waiting on you. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting on your man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Daniel, I will tell you something. Tell me. I even fully masticated the meat yet. I, <laughs> I will tell you. Alvin, your test is award winning. I can see why. Mm-hmm. The appeal on this sauce almost has a slight buffaloish kind of feel to it. Mm-hmm. So I could see myself making hot wings or even the shrimp I mentioned earlier on and tossing it in the sauce. Now you use the word masticate. Define the word masticate for the viewers who may not know what that word means. 
and the culinary terms of that. Mm. That's when you put the meat in your mouth. You mm-hmm. put the carrot, whatever you're eating. Right. And you move your jaw. Wow. And your teeth. And you see Dr. Mano. Mm-hmm. You grind them together. Wow. And you bring the flavors in together. It mingles with the palate, the tongue. Mm-hmm. And it registers endorphins in the brain. Put that breast in your mouth. Put that breast in Yeah. Your mouth. Put the wings Eat in it. Your mouth. And that's what food does, eh, Daniel? Mm-hmm. It obviously is supposed to resonate happy feelings. And that's why sometimes people are maybe a little depressed or sad. Yes. They want to eat. All right, I want comfort food. I want something nice to eat. I want something mm-hmm. good to drink. And that's what food, the power of food and what it is about. The power of food and comfort. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit, you know, a lot of people started toying with their own, you know, recipes at home. What is your favorite COVID-19 recipe? Around this time in March 2020, people were doing a lot of fried chicken. Right. And they were doing doubles. So I enjoyed making doubles at home yes. as a chef because obviously when you take away things from us, we crave it even more. Yes. So we couldn't have doubles at that time. The vendors were out, work were closed. But the fried chicken also, I, I made wings and I made my own sauce and I tossed it in together. So I would say those two items are definitely were on my list for my COVID-19 musts. And I did lives on them on Facebook and whatnot like that and shows. What was the worst you've seen? Because a lot of people have been posting the, the different uh, I mean, I don't want to call no names, you know, but what is the, what is the worst you've seen? <laughs> I'll tell you something. There are a lot of people outside there who cannot boil water, and I do not make fun of them. And I'll tell you why, what I did to correct that later on. But nevertheless, I see a man make pilau with egg. He take boiled egg. No, and no, he no, cut no, no, the no. egg and he make a pilau with it. You're joking. No, I'm serious. You all know in Trinidad to make a pilau. You need to find that post. Rice and peas. It's a pilau. It's a cook up of rice and peas. Uh-huh. You know, you put chicken in it, you might put beef, you might put pork. This man put boiled egg in the pilau. <laughs> and I say, you know, COVID 19 starting to turn people a little nutty in the head at this point in time. But no, we don't want that. <laughs> but have you created any of your own combinations? Of course. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, sauce salads? Recipes. Throw recipes? The, yeah, yeah. Throw the well, pandemic. I am constantly always creating um, a lot of recipes. And during COVID-19 2020, when we were on lockdown, a significant amount of, amount of recipes were created for my new book that just came out in December 2020. Mm-hmm. My, my name of my book is The Impregnation of Flavor. And I speak about the impregnation of flavor, of actually infusing flavor wow. as a study of flavor, a scientific study, because flavor is flavorful, but how then you make flavor even more bounded yes. by, you know, all the great um, attributes that make it, make you satiate in your mouth. And I say that the only way we do that is from birth, where we impregnate something yes. even into creation. And on and that, that, and that is it. And on that topic of impregnation, I want us to move on to the next source, to impregnate the source. Well, with the chicken, let me impress you. Which one we going for right now? We're going with the Maggie spicy with shadow benny pepper oh. sauce, hailing from Trinidad and Tobago. All right, so shadow benny, as people will outside here know that uh, mm-hmm. closest family member to Coolantro. So oh. we're going inside there. I'm putting it. I like the color on it. Eh? Let me take my flap, dip it in. I'm going in for it. You know, it's from Trinidad and Tobago. There we go. The shadow belly coming through inside of it, you know. And of course, in Trinidad and Tobago, shadow belly is a big thing. So well we inside right now. But I wanted to tell me about your show, We Outside. Tell me about that show. Well, the thing about We Outside was that it's a it's a sort of a, a, a chant here in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm-hmm. From me say, We Outside. It's even a song. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yes. I think um Ding Dong. Ding Dong. Yeah. Ding Dong Reapers, yeah. Cause we outside, we outside from long time. From long time, <laughs> yeah. Best food, best vibes. Yeah. And then he sang one, um, um, we inside. <laughs> yeah, but I don't remember that one. What's that thing, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about this is that yeah, we outside. Yeah. And I wanted, apart from just doing cooking shows, Daniel, I wanted to actually showcase Trinidad and Tobago. A lot of the entrepreneurs, a lot of the business establishments, because during COVID nineteen, a lot of them suffered. So I wanted to, apart from just teaching people about food, but to go out and show what great talents were outside there, what people were making, what, what, what was birthed out of COVID-19. A lot of people lost their jobs and they opened establishments. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to more, be more of a tourist-bounded show to sell Trinidad and Tobago. We outside in the Carney Swamp, we down south, we, we down um, on the beach, we dive in for lobsters. And to market Trinidad and Tobago and the rest of the Caribbean, as being a, a destination yes and that's so important right now because as you know we don't have that money here in the caribbean when it comes to oil and gas again and we have to heavily rely on food tourism and hospitality at this point in time i want you to reminisce on some of the top destinations in trinidad and tobago for me starting with trinidad 
I have to say that it is brilliant that I'm here today because Tempo represents the Caribbean. Yes. And I've been to a lot of Caribbean islands throughout uh, throughout the, the, the Caribbean Sea. Um, I genuinely love Barbados. Barbados is a beautiful island. And we actually have a pepper sauce from Barbados here. Yeah? Uh-huh. I tell okay, you. Yeah. So emphasis on that in a little while. I love Grenada. <laughs> Grenada, you know, they, they, they're very different in yeah. that nature. Of, uh, they have a different culture across there, but they're very hospitable also. St. Kitts and Nevis. I love them right. also. Beautiful island. I've been to Jamaica. A lot of my good friends. Wagwan, Jamaica. Wagwan, popcorn! With your best Jamaican accent. Let me hear you. Alright. So what I've been taught is... Anyway. <laughs> you are... You are... The, uh, he and so... No. Actually, I just break into the Bajan accent a little bit because I just... <laughs> Wagwan, popcorn. This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by the U.S. Virgin Islands. This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by Burger King. We're going here because we're just talking about the Caribbean. So we're going here to the Caribbean flavors, the sizzler. Whew. Right, and this is the fifth sauce here. So things really are about to, to get a little steamy, as we would say in Trinidad and Salsa Tobago. Salsa picante. That's yeah. what it is about. So you ready to do this? I'm ready to do this. This, this one will like you dancing. Picante. So Whew. I started to feel that it's starting to resonate a little bit. <laughs> I want you to take a big dip, take a double dip, and then give me a Jamaican accent. Alright, right, let me, let me, let, let, because I'm not on games, I'm going to show you this. We're going in deep. Deep. Cut that. I went straight to the bottom. My right. gosh. Bring that down there now. Daniel, it's been nice doing you. Let, let me see you. See you come for war. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Like a boss, you mustn't rest. Wait, wings. Mm hmm. Okay, to be honest with you, it is piquant. It has that nice little zest in the back there. Mm -hmm. It has a fruity finish to it also. I'm getting some fresh herbs inside there also. Again, garlic. I'm getting some shadow bean inside there also. It is a tasty pepper sauce. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. Each of them have similar, different profiles. Sweet, tart, fruity, but this one is a tasty one. This one could pretty much go with anything that you're eating a pilau a mm -hmm. stew a curry even the wings anything so good this is nice very good so i know he's a busy man traveling so much you're writing you're doing your show you're cooking how do you find that balance in life doing all these different things hmm. i sometimes i try to figure out myself you know daniel how i find this balance because you have to have excellent time management what you're doing you have to know what you're going to at the beginning of the year of january it is a pivotal time for me my birthday is on december 31st so when I cross the 31st and I start January 1st, it's like new year, new birthday, mm. everything in front of me. So I have to chart out what I want to achieve that year. And that's not right. It's a creeper. <laughs> tell me, like, tell me, tell me about our balance. This, this is not kicking up on me then. Um, I, I want to know exactly. That's not right. <laughs> You're going to not enjoy milk. I like that. You're enjoying your milk. Yeah. You have to know exactly what you want to do that year. So I want to know if I want to Daniel. be doing music, if I want to do in writing, how much shows I want to produce and how much traveling. So I chart it out every three months. And pretty much if anything I need to do, I need to know at least a one month in advance. And I try to maintain balance. It must make sense. It must tie into each other. Because as a brand, as Chef Jason as a brand, yes. it all has to line up to make sense. So obviously you're selling yourself to the public and you have to be marketable in some nature. So strategic thinking, Daniel, is very, very important. This is the point of the interview where we like to raise the tempo. We like to take the tempo all the way up. So we're going to start now with the house of tempo. You have a nice color to it, you know? It's shining nice. Let go. Mm. Daniel. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse. I don't know if I get stronger. <laughs> The pool roasted. It tastes nice. In other words, it's mild. 
mild. Then how about the tempo to it, eh? How about tempo, I like that. Jason, and the way he dressed right now, and I know what you're doing. Okay, let's call it in war. Let's call it mind warfare. You trying to set me up for failure now. I realize that. When Spidey dress code? War, Daniel! I come here to. Don't try to brainwash me right now. Be, yeah, oh god, yeah, babe, I'm good. I come here <laughs> to do battle against all these peppers. Mm -hmm. I know it's pressure, I know it's fire, I know it's heat. I come here for a challenge. Alright. And the thing about it is that all in a girl make sure Jason tap out. I, I just like milk too, eh, but. A few years ago, you entered the, uh, the music industry yeah, boy. with your song, Bubble With Me. What inspired that move to get into the music industry? Well, at that point in time, I was doing my, my, I was doing my master's degree in marketing, right? And for Chef Jason to grow, I obviously needed to learn how to market myself, how to speak, how to dress, do all this good stuff, how to prepare the projects to bring to companies. And somebody brought it to my attention that, listen, you're on television, you know, you're on print media, you're <laughs> online. The only thing that you're not tackling right now is actually um, radio, okay. radio waves. Yes. And, uh, I have a lot of artist friends and uh, I did a, a song called Bubble With Me right. with my good friend um, K.I. Pesad, probably Ban Trevini, and we did a Chutney Soaker and Bubble plays off the whole aspect of, you know, bubbling your waist and also bubbling a pot. You know we like to whine. And the thing about it was that it did success, it was very successful there eh? and it launched me on the radio so every so often he was hearing my name calling Chef Jason is the new Chutney Soaker star. Chef Jason show is tonight on TV. Wow. What is he Chef Jason in the papers? What is he Chef Jason online? You know, Chef Jason going to New York next week, you know. So I was, it was just a marketing thing that I did. Will I call myself a cultural dilettante? No. I did it for the love of my country and yes. for the love of my brand. Walk me through some lyrics of the song. A quick line. They call me Magic Finger. They call me Master Baker. When them have things to bubble, their woman call me over. They only calling me because I have the recipe. If you hurry for curry, girl, come. Sexy woman alone getting some. Come and bubble, we put Chef Jason. We getting more music from the original bubbling star or nah? Listen, at this point in time, I'm shooting a lot of shows. Okay. Especially during the COVID lockdown, I have to be a little more creative at home and doing these things. And it's a bit difficult for me to actually balance the both of them. Right. I'm trying to take the, as I mentioned, the whole hospitality and tourism and aspect of doing my shows a little further. So it does take out a lot of me mentally and physically. I want to do a, I want to do a para. Okay. So look out for that. Awesome. This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by Be Mobile. This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by Unipet. Now we move on to the next sauce. We have the Bertie's original pepper sauce here now, boy. All right, Bertie's. I know about this brand. All right, what do you think about use it? Nice color. You know, as a chef, you must comment on these things, eh? Color. Obviously, character and whatnot like that. Color and whatnot. Texture. Just to show the people I ain't playing. I dip in them. I know what Daniel doing across there, but I dip in. Dip it a little more, man. <laughs> Try a thing, man. And a stick back. You They're taking chin up. And a stick chin up. There we go. There we go. Mm -hmm. I love it. Very nice. Listen, I like the texture about this. It's very important to see the little seeds in the pepper inside of it. You get a nice vinegar inside there, obviously. A little tang. It's not overwhelming to say that I can't taste the wings. I still taste the flavors. And that's very important down here when eating food. Right. The pepper sauce should not quell or take over the meal or you shouldn't be tasting just pepper 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 i mean yeah because then people wouldn't like the meal what's that i say because then people mightn't like the meal if all it tastes is pepper in it listen as a chef it's very important mm -hmm. whatever natural flavors you use inside it black pepper and salt paprika it should shine on its own that's why a lot of people cook steaks and they just say a little bit of black pepper and salt does the does the work is because the natural proteins and the sugars in the steak actually 
make the steak shine on its own. But when you start to put shadow bending, in the garlic, onion, celery, and the whole kitchen sink inside there, something with nasty natural flavors. Good sauce. Have you ever had an experience where somebody tell you, Chef Jason, but me and like how this tastes and this isn't tasting good at all, this isn't disgusting. Tell them about the experience Sorry. where somebody didn't like your food. Any person who is in the creative field, Daniel, mm -hmm. whether you're an artist, you're, you're, even if you're a carpenter, just saying, not everything you do will obviously put smiles on people's face. Not everything they would like. Even if you talk about the head of a state, if you make a decision, some people would like it, some will dislike it. It will be for some, it will be, will be for others. So you have to take everything with a pinch of salt and maybe a, a little dash of pepper. Understand that there are different opinions at the end of the day. Especially in the creative field of being a chef. Certain things work for certain people. You have to just understand it, be respectful to it. I know it's a bit rage sometimes. I just lose my hat sometimes, especially when you're putting a lot of work into a dish. And people don't appreciate it because they don't have the tongue or the palate fit or the understanding. They're not worldly. They have not traveled to understand what's going on. You just have to leave that alone, you know, and know what you do, you did it to the best. So nobody has ever told Chef Jason Peru that I do like how this food tastes. I get it, you know, early in my career, I did get it now and then. And tell me about that experience. You know, it can be a little demotivating sometimes, I'll be honest with you. Because obviously, the more work you put into it, you, you feel sad. Yes. But uh, it will let it stop you, you know. You just have to move forward with it. Take the constructive criticism. Try to perfect it, better it, make, make, make a meal that probably would appeal to a little more. Okay. But take it in constructive criticism nevertheless. But try not to lose your, 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 your cool too much. That's very important. That. Try not to lose your cool. Like how oh, you're losing your cool right now. I'm losing my cool. Let's move, on to the next, eating, let's move on to the next pepper sauce here. We have the Matooks Trinidad Scorpion Pepper. How are you doing over there? Scorpion, you say, man? Scorpion pepper, you know, ranked as one of the hottest peppers in the world. Alright, Matooks. Yeah. Brand doing for Matooks. Trinidad and Tobago. Matooks, scorpion pepper, you going? How are you doing on a scale of 1 to 10? I dip in there now. Here we go. Real time, no fake. Chef Jason is real as a go. Real represent real. I know what Daniel doing across there, but I Don't worry, I'm doing it over here, man. Tolerance. Episodes of experience here, you know. Okay, Talk to me. Um, it's, re it's really, um. It's really, it's really scorpion pepper, people. Do you like? Woo! A crying day, boy. A crying. It look like. It look like in the Caribbean. You eat that whole thing, Daniel? Hmm? You eat that whole thing? Yes, sir. Right now, you're looking like you got a dread horn. I horn in first, horn in. <laughs> horn. All them girls are about to hype. La 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 Chef Jason, Woo! Chef Jason, we have a recurring segment on this show called Explain That Gram, powered by B Mobile. And it's a segment where we dig up on your Instagram, get some images, and we're going to show you the images and you're going to give us some more context into these images. So, you ready for me? Yeah. What are you doing over there? No, I, I got Daniel, I got I just was just to see a little bit. Let me hear the images. Let me hear the images on Daniel, on B Mobile, um, on Instagram, please. It's captioned Scorpion Peppers. Can you handle the heat? Oh my gosh, that was a good few years ago. I remember that. Mm -hmm. I was actually making my own pepper sauce. I was by a friend in St. Anne's. And we were actually, what we were doing, boy, I think we were doing roasted chicken. Right. And we wanted to create our own blender pepper sauce to roast off the chicken. And funny enough, it was a play on Piri Piri, which is the first sauce we had. Wow. We used fresh scorpions inside there. And it was quite good. To be honest with you, the longer these things marinate, Daniel, it's going to be a little more difficult to stomach and tolerate. <laughs> but those were some beautiful peppers. I remember going to the market that morning, pick it up. We have excellent scorpion peppers in Trinidad Tobago. And you go down Maruga side, obviously, you'll get that. Um, and what about this image here, Chef Jason? What is that one, boy? That one is me. I was just fooling around. I was doing a shoot. I was doing a shoot about um, two years ago and it was for food styling and the thing about it was that they brought something called a quasar which is supposed to be a lighting piece mm -hmm. it's supposed to bring some illum illumination to the, the set now illumination. I thought it looked like um, Luke Skywalker, Skywalk, Skywalker's things now mm -hmm. and the things that they caught the swords with so I just picked it up and I was playing with it and I got, I got in trouble because apparently it's an expensive piece of equipment 
But yeah, that's the kind of funny that's have on set. It's all good. Chef Jason, explain this video to me. Oh God, Lord. As a chef, you need to be very exploratory. Mm -hmm. What I have in there is actually the penis of a cow. Of a, a, no, bull's a bull. Penis. A bull. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's just my brain. Sorry, Daniel. Yes. Yeah. Um, it is the penis of a, a bull, and um, it is something that does make a bull piss a lot of which you would normally beat people in the Caribbean with. I know of the islands. You all know familiar with about right. it. But I was actually trying to find a culinary appropriation fit. And I heard that it could be treated like oxtail and cook. So I was just showcasing and educating people about it. It created a big stink online because they thought I was fondling it. Really and truly, you have to be very intimate with the cuts that you're doing, steaks and so forth like that. Right. But that is what a, a bull penis looked like. It's about 10 to 12 inches long. A lot of people were happy about that. I did not see any illumination in that, nevertheless, I saw it from a culinary point of view. But I'm yet to cook it, so all look out for it and stay tuned to my Instagram. Chef Jason. Yeah, boy. How did... How did the bull's penis taste? <laughs> how did the bull's penis taste? It, um... It tasted good. No, I mean, I didn't really... I don't mean it like that. You know, it's just like... It, is, it tastes like beef. So you ate the bull's it's, penis? It, it, I, I did try it. I tested it a little bit. So you did eat it, the bull's I, yes, penis? Yes, I did eat the penis of the bull. <laughs> but the other parts that I do cook also, I did recently the, the testicles of the bull also, the bull balls. It's well, on YouTube, you all can check it out. And these are all parts inside of the culinary world that we will cook in different cultures. So you all shouldn't frown on it. It's very beefy, it's very muscular, as you know. A penis tends to be a little... It has veins and it carries blood in it, it could get hard, it could get soft, depending on what you're using it for. You know what I'm talking about, Daniel. <laughs> This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by Popeyes. This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, Trinidad and Tobago. We want to take it to Barbados now with the old duppy fire pooch sauce. Old duppy, uh, you want me to eat some old duppy bar, 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 pepper sauce from from Barbados? I can do my accent real good, huh? With that one, fire pooch, papaya. Carrying you around the Caribbean, you know, and you like to travel. <laughs> but that dumb. There we go. Well, are you know, funny enough, huh? Tell Barbados, me. it's my favorite island outside Trinidad and Tobago. I love Barbados. People are beautiful. Let's go. Let's do it. Mm. Woo! Woo! Mm -hmm. Daniel! Are you sure? Woo! Mm. Listen. How things over there? That one is not to be fooled with. Let me tell you something. I look at it. I look at it. I look at the texture, Daniel. I look at it. But it's like it. I feel you need some enjoyment Ooh. to help you out. Hmm. You need some of that enjoyment to help you out. Oh my god. Boy, milk and pepper sauce. Mm. Listen. Listen, milk is really the best thing to when you see you're doing these things to drink milk. Eh? Mm -hmm. Because water is not. Water spreads the capsaicin which is the active agent in pepper sauce over the palate okay. and it makes it it intensifies and make it worse so the milk actually quells it because of the protein the casein in the milk it coats the tongue so wow. it gives you some some relief boy that takes a just a huge Ooh. congratulations on the first publication but i must ask what exactly are you impregnating what's the what's the inspiration <laughs> behind that title <laughs> A lot of good parts <laughs> to make me laugh. The impregnation of flavor is basically a, 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 a play on words. Um, it, I, my mentor is Jamie Oliver, and he came out with a, a title of his book called The Naked Chef, and it was showing ingredients in their natural form. Right. And I wanted to showcase our Caribbean vitality and the food that I've eaten throughout the course of the world 
in a way that I could actually make it action packed and even make it more orally bounded and flavorful. And how do I make something even more flavorful? I can't just say the flavor, the flavor. So I was studying how to take something such as a wing and make it even more flavorful. And I said, what well, the only thing I could do or to make this or breed it into something <laughs> that is even greater is to impregnate it yes. with flavor. And that's why I named it that. And it's basically a study of how making taking your typical items and reinventing them and stuffing as much flavor into it that will appeal to, to the palate and many cultures around the world and that's what it is about it's a scientific it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a scientific study behind mm -hmm. it right and yeah it's a great book it's been doing exceptionally well and how long it took you to write the book i've been working on it 18 years well wow. i put it together in the past three years it's locally done here in terms of printed edited written uh the photography also and whatnot like that. So I'm very proud about it, proud to be Trinidad and Tobago. And I must say, we have sold almost one third of our print count already and we have touched every single country in the world at this point and every continent. That's something I'm very, 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 very proud about. And I must say it has good to go. It's been out four months and exceptionally well and hats off to that and to my team. Congratulations, Jason. And something else that you should be proud of is that you also made it to the end, to the final source. The habanero 100% Trinidad scorpion pepper. This is the final sauce. You think you're able? Listen, they have something saying we come too far to turn back now. Come too far to turn back now. And even though this thing hot boy, what is this slogan? 100% authentic Trinidad scorpion habanero boy. Habanero Trinidad Trinidad scorpion. Mm -hmm. Daniel, this is the last one. This is the last one, and we have a segment on the show we call The Last Dab, where you put one more dab of that pepper so on top do? of your final wing. So what are you doing? I'm going to do, do it with you. Uh, let me do it. Let me do it this way, because it, I dip in all the time. Let me try this. Come true, come true, come true. Yes. You all see that, eh? You all seeing that? This is number 10. It's supposed to be the worst. The final one. And the, the, the most dangerous on the scale. It's been nice knowing you, Daniel. Let's go. Well, there we go. How are we doing over there? And this is the hot moment. <laughs> Powered by Andrews. <coughs> Share some words of inspiration to anyone who may be looking who aspires to be like Chef Jason or even greater. Okay. Yes, sir. Share some words of inspiration with us. Be unique. Be unique. Be this. Be distinct. Don't try to be like anybody else. You know what people sometimes tell you? It is the next where we play. Oh, you're the next so and so. Stay. Motivational. Sensational. Inspirational. More words, Chef Jesus. Do listen to Daniel either. How about putting raw pepper, scorpion pepper sauce on our wing light? This is the hot moment poured by Andrews, Chef. Women love men who can cook. So tell me a most unique experience with somebody who's sliding your DM. Or somebody sliding into my DM? I don't. I, not, not me sliding into theirs, right? You sliding into yours. This time to man. We say, hey chef. I love I love the way that you cook. The, you know, as cheesy and corny as it is. I love your shows. I love I, I love I think you're very you know you're very cute, you're very sexy. They will tell you that. I mean, it's very hard for somebody to with the confidence to come into your DM like that, right? And you don't know what to come in because sometimes it might flatter you, sometimes it may be off putting. But usually I will get that. Guys like to hear that they're good looking and they're sexy. So 
I go take that any day. <coughs> sorry, well, sorry, Daniel. Now what is next for Chef Jason? Probably this. Probably some Andrews. Some next move. <laughs> this I can really do it right now, to be honest with you. You asking me about what next for me? Are you studying what's going to happen later to me in the next two, three hours when I reach home? I go be on the trail. You should be concerned. I, uh, what's next for me? I'm working on some products for the supermarket right now. In terms of bringing out a lot of grab and go items. During this COVID 19 time, people uh, they can't really dine that much, Daniel. So they're looking for things that you could pick up on the quick on the fly. Yes. To, to pretty much you know make life easy for them because people are really working that much you're looking for affordable shoes so i'm going to be doing a lot of things like that and seeing if i can launch it to the market maybe on the export market you never know i think i have a good brand and i have some good remedies and formulas that i could come up with impregnating some food for some people chef jason thank you so much for coming out on the show we're gonna roll out the chef Chef Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show. We're going to roll out the red carpet for you now and give you 30 seconds to talk to your fans, tell the people what's going on in your life. <laughs> Listen, what's going on in my life right now is very exciting. Not at this moment, but probably a little later when I regain my senses and I deal with a few rolls of toilet paper. I know that things good. <sighs> Listen, I have... Listen, how the book out right now? The book is doing exceptionally well. I want people to go to www.chefjasonperu.com. I deliver worldwide to you guys. I deliver locally. So anywhere through the Caribbean, Antarctica, Canada, Mexico. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me again. Trinidad. I mean, we have it for you. Just go to www.chefjasonperu. We've got 200 recipes. You're going to love them. Full gloss pictures. They're amazing. You'll love them. They're perfect. It's high quality and trust me, it's gonna replace any other cookbook entry and answer bigger. Daniel are done boy. I good. I can't do it. Yeah, devil. I don't like you again, boy. We done, right? Well, there you have it. My name is Daniel Loveless, and that was another episode of Hot Ones Caribbean, and that was a hot one. We are live, we are live, we are chat, we are chill, we are hot one. Temperature is pure vibes in No, it is ma it's machismo. No, no, no. I know. It's ma that is my theme as I started. I know. Yeah, yeah, please. I am, I am so content to you, but go ahead. Yeah. No, girl. This edition of Hot Ones Caribbean is brought to you by the Ministry of Tourism, Culture and the Arts, Trinidad and Tobago.